point XIV. 14. James 2, 23 to 24. We're wrapping this up. We've already got a, a view to this earlier. 23 and 24. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God as a result of his faith operating with his works. Summary, you see that a man <coughs> is justified by works and not by faith alone. When That alone is an adverb, modifies as justified. So you see that a man is not justified only or alone by works, but also in another way, by faith. You, you do the, the uh, works justification once you have expressed your faith. The first justification unto eternal life. Then you add the faith, add the works to the faith, and you get to be called the friend of God. So James teaches his readers that there are two kinds of justification. You see that a man is justified by his works. According to scripture, a man is justified in a number of ways. One way is taught in James 2.24a, namely justification of one's faith in Christ to men by works in order to demonstrate one's eternal relationship with God, mature one's faith, and by doing something which has divine good value. <clears throat> now look at 24b, and not by faith alone. So we look at 24a, which is, you see that a man is justified by his works, and then we tack on 24b, and not by faith alone, which means, and another way is one is justified, according to James 24b, is by faith alone in Christ alone, which results in eternal life in heaven. This part of verse 24 teaches the other kind of justification unto eternal life, which is by faith alone, no works permitted. Remember Ephesians 2, 8, 9. These are great proof texts coming from Paul, juxtaposed to James, and they corroborate one another 100%. Here it is. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that salvation not of yourselves, that that means neuter. That doesn't refer back to faith, which is feminine, because that is neuter in this case, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Thereafter, you go to verse 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. But first you have to get saved by grace through faith and not of yourselves, and then you add works, we're, we're his workmanship now. We're in Christ. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them, which resulted in, if we do, we have a choice. We're declared to be the friend of God, a faithful believer. <clears throat> Take a look at Ephesians 2, 8, 9. See, for by, for by the grace of God, you are having been saved. You are having been saved. You're saved. Having been saved. You continue to be faith, saved in the present with the perfect tense, having been saved. You notice that perfect? And then present. So you are saved, having been saved. Ongoing present results from the point of the fact that more, when you believe. And this, this, notice, is neuter. So it's not faith. Faith is feminine, so it refers to something other than faith. Some contend that it means faith, but no, it's neuter, so neuter doesn't match with a feminine noun. So, this salvation is what's referring to, is not of yourselves, it's God's gift. Just a little thought there. So, this part, 24b, is uh, verse 24, teaches the other kind of justification unto eternal life, which is by faith alone, no works permitted. Romans 11, 6. How about that? Romans 11, 6. 
time to read it now. But if it is by grace, in the same way there is present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice, but if your salvation, remnant that are saved, is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. The two are mutually exclusive for one another. It kind of nails it. You can't put the two together. One works handily with the other. So, James says in 2.24 of, of uh, James' epistle that there are two kinds of justification, one which comes by faith alone, which results in salvation unto eternal life, and one which comes by works, which results in the believer's, the believer's eternal relationship with God being demonstrated to mankind, to men, and God's work being accomplished through the believer, providing rewards in heaven when the believer gets there. Point B, note that James does not say, oops, I've got to put the line back in. James does not say that there is only one kind of justification, which is by works and faith combined. People will say that. Now, let's review the verse grammatically again, etymologically, word study, from the Greek to verify this. 2.24, continue. I guess I could make this a little smaller. Okay. I got the fonts a little lower, smaller. James, James 2, 23 to 24. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. The Greek word manon, which is translated alone in English, is an adverb, which must then modify the verb is justified and not the noun faith. Faith is feminine in gender, and the adverb alone is neuter. So from the grammar of the original Greek Bible, you know that the word alone is not talking about faith, which is feminine. You would, This would be similar to the following statement in English, where the word alone likewise modifies the verb. You see that automobiles <coughs> are made with manual transmissions, and not with automatic ones alone, or a clearer presentation. You see that automobiles are made with manual transmissions, and not only, and not made only with autom automatics. Two kinds of automobiles, those with manual and those with automatic transmission. One cannot state that what this sentence is saying is that each and every automobile is made with two transmissions, one automatic and one manual. And we're just following the Greek and may, instead of making it uh, a salvation message, making it an automobile message. And in like manner, <coughs> one cannot state that verse 24 says, you see that a man is justified by works and is not justified only by faith, in the sense that both must work together for a man to be justified unto eternal life. Verse 24 cannot say this. You cannot say this, right? You cannot say this because the word translated alone is a neuter adverb, where therefore, which therefore cannot modify the Greek word for faith, which is a feminine noun. The adverb not alone modifies the verb, is justified, and means not alone, i.e. not just one kind of justification, not just one kind of automobile. So verse 224 of James says, a man isn't to have just one kind of justification, which is by faith, this kind resulting in eternal life. Rather, he is also supposed to have, gives the possibility to have another kind of justification, which is by works. This second kind, resulting in a longer mortal life, and rewards in heaven as a result of his works, testifying to mankind that God has provided eternal life for him as a free gift. So interesting you talk about eternal life as a free gift. Nothing needs to be done. Yet, when you're doing that, you're adding works to your free gift salvation to demonstrate to man what salvation is all about, and you get rewarded for that. You add works to your faith. And it's voluntary. We get disciplined for not doing it. If you don't do it enough, and it's all the time you should be doing it. So Hodges, in his epistle on James, leaving the imagined objector behind, 
James returns in verses 24 to 26 to address his readers directly. His statement here confirms that what we observed above, that there are two kinds of justification, not one kind conditioned on faith plus works. James's words do not do not mean a man is justified by works and not justified by faith only or alone. Instead, James's words should be read like this. You see then that a man is justified by works and are only justified by faith. So the verb appears twice. If you put it in there, it's presumed the second time. The key to understanding is the Greek adverb only, only, monon, which does not qualify or modify the word faith, since the form would then have been mones, M-O-N-E-S. As an adverb, however, it modifies the verb justified, implied in the second clause. James is saying that a by faith justification is not the only kind of justification there is. There is also a by works justification. For those who are believers, right? I'm going to put that in there. For those who are already believers unto rewards and preservation of the value of one's temporal life as a believer. Repetition. I know I'm doing a lot of this repetition, but this is a more often misinterpreted uh, passage. The former type is before God, by faith alone. The latter type is before men. And you just look at Romans 4, 1 to 3, as we looked at before many times. James, in C, what is he doing? Does not say here or anywhere else that one's salvation is established and validated by one's works before God. Similarly, James does not say that one's salvation can be made invalid by a lack of works. He never says that justification by faith cannot exist apart from justification by works. This is why James urges believers to live as Christians ought to, the theme of his entire epistle. Let's start with chapter 1, verse 1. Talking about the believers already, and they're scattered throughout. And he's encouraging them to stay faithful, or get faithful, <coughs> and don't make favorites. Now, if one's saving faith must be confirmed by one's works, in order for one to be truly saved, in other words, one is not saved unless one shows continual evidence in one's life of being a believer, or even some evidence of being a believer. If this false doctrine, and it's not true, were true, then why does Scripture teach assurance of one's salvation at the point of trusting alone in Christ alone? Take a look at 1 John 5, 9 through 13. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater, for the testimony of God is this, that he has justified, testified concerning his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Disbelieve. The one who does not believe has, him, has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. You see, it's either faith or not faith. Not faith plus works or works plus faith. Not. It's only faith is there. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. So if you're in the Son, just because you believed alone, you have eternal life. And it says, he who has the Son has the life by believing only. He who does not have the Son, hasn't believed yet, does not have the life yet. And then verse 13. These things I have written to you, these, this particular passage, I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. That's it. Simple. You know that you believe, you are sure that you have eternal life. <clears throat> Some people <clears throat> get so lost, wander away, but they're truly saved. But they think they have to add words because some church got a hold of them or whatever. And they don't know that all I have to do is 
Remember when I believe. And when you believe,